So season three is here and with it we got a huge weapon tuning pass or at least on paper but realistically speaking how much of the meta was actually shaken up. What weapons are the best now after the season three tuning pass? Today we're kickstarting our season long loadout series for season three with my choices here for the top 10 loadouts that you'll see with a season three meta. As we go along drop your thoughts down below what are your favorite weapons of choice and the builds for them if you don't see a couple of them on this list. As always this is by no means a definitive list of solely one to ten. The meta is thankfully healthy enough that when Weapons outside of this can absolutely be competitive at the least and dominant in some other cases, so feel free to drop your favorites. We're all here for the same goal, to improve our builds and to do better as players. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Warzone, Season 3, and now that it's official, any and all Modern Warfare 2 content. We're on the road to half a million subscribers, and I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, in celebration of Season 3's launch and that official confirmation of Modern Warfare 2, my friends over at G Fuel have bumped up code Espresso to 30% off your entire order, so if you want to check anything off for the very first time, grab a restock. Now is as best time as any. Saves you a decent bit of cash per order. If you're interested, I'd highly recommend Hype Sauce, Pink Drip, the new Morbius Nectarine flavor, Starfruit, and Strawberry Banana. Can't go wrong with any of those, but link in the description below if you guys are at all interested. That said, let's jump into these loadouts. Now, for a sort of baseline here, perks and equipment wise are pretty much standard across all of my builds here, and I think that they'll help you out in those designations the most, but of course there's variability, but kind of getting the baseline and repetitive part here out of this talking perks and equipment firstly perks i run quick fix overkill tempered on that second loadie if needed since we also do have those lootable perks with the season three update as well that changes dynamics a lot and also amped now, quick fix, it starts your health regen upon eliminating a player or starting to plate up, which truly helps you more than you may realize. Overkill, of course, two weapons naturally. Tempered if I don't find it as a lootable perk to use less armor in gunfights to get that full HP. And then amped to swap weapons faster. That, to me, is absolutely huge, and I wouldn't want to trade it for anything else in the tier 3 slot. Though, things like Combat Scout do work, yes, but that perk in particular annoys me beyond belief, so I tend not to use it, and I like just swapping weapons faster. As for equipment, I use the throwing knives and the stims. The throwing so that insta finish and saving ammo if you need to clean up a player in a pinch and also stims to get that health back and that speed boost you'll get when popping one but that's the baseline of your class around the weapons so let's talk about the 10 weapons you should be using number one here this is going to be something that is a little bit more personal preference based it's one that i just want to talk about because i've been having a blast with it as of recently we talked about it a week ago or two weeks ago i forget when we put that video up but the cr56 amax throwing it back to modern warfare and of course if you're looking forward to modern warfare 2 might not be bad to get you to the gunplay here of Modern Warfare weapons again. But the AMAX absolutely had its place in the meta for quite some time, and rightfully so. The thing still holds up to this day, nearly two years later after its introduction in Season 4 of Modern Warfare. For this, though, I'd highly recommend the build of the Monolithic Suppressor, the Zodiac Barrel, the VLK 3x Optic, the Commando Foregrip, and the 45 round Magazine. The only thing that you're going to see as a sort of deterrent here for this is the recoil, as well as then the magazine capacity. You don't have a whole ton of ammo to work with by comparison comparison, a lot of the other comparative rifle builds have 60 round magazines with them, but the 45 is the max you can end up getting with the AMAX, but if you're accurate, that's all you need. Next, I want to talk about another rifle that has been an absolute blast to use as of late, that being the C-58. Now, the C-58 is kind of the Cold War version of the AMAX, maybe not quite to the extent of the EM-2. I think the EM-2 is still viable, but it might just be on the outside looking in of this top 10. C58 is a little easier to control, has a little bit more mobility with it as well. So for the C58, this is one that we're familiar with and we've talked about before, but it still holds up. The Agency Suppressor, Task Force Barrel, Axial Arms 3x Optic, Field Agent Grip, and the 55 round magazine is more than enough to get the job done. You just need to know how to control that weapon bounce in recoil when firing, so that's something that may take a little bit of time to get used to. Outside of that, we're going to talk about some SMGs here, because the SMG category had a few weapons that were adjusted but also some that weren't so they may end up making this a little bit more of a defined meta but the next three weapons we'll talk about are absolutely ones that you can do well with the first one i'll talk about is the sten we talked about this in our close quarters meta video a couple of weeks back but it's still seriously i think is one of the more sleeper weapons in the close quarters meta this being something that built properly is great for mobility and absolutely can pack a punch this i'd end up recommending the recoil booster the rapid barrel the slight reflector or any optic 
optic of your choice. If you want to put like an iron sight or something, that's totally fine as well. The Gawain para stock, the M1941 hand stop, hollow point or subsonic as an ammo type. Subsonic is a weird one to consider because it was such a bad option as of the first couple of seasons here, but it recently got an adjustment where they took off the penalty for that damage range. So now you end up just staying off the radar a little bit further and you don't necessarily need any sort of silencer. So that recoil booster to increase the rate of fire now is no longer really a deterrent. So that's something that is an option there. I ended up running the ACP 32 round fast mag for that added damage, as well as bullet velocity, penetration, and reload quickness. Though just know that if you end up getting in a situation where you have to take out four players, you might need to reload once or twice while doing so. Then to round this out, the polymer grip, acrobatic, and quick. But honestly, I seriously think that if you can get the hang of this, the smaller magazine size, the mobility, it is one that absolutely can pack a bunch with those damage rounds, so absolutely give it a try. Now, the well gun is the next weapon we'll talk about, and this is one that you may be well versed in. We've talked about it here on the channel plenty of times, but it still retains its top 10 status for me, because surprisingly, out of all of the adjustments made for weapons, this one was a dominant meta weapon that actually wasn't touched in Season 3. So it really is kind of just where it was beforehand, which is still an incredible viable and powerful SMG for close quarters. Now, for this, I end up normally running, of course, our recoil booster, the shrouded barrel, the GW03 optic, though that is personal preference. You can put on a slate reflector or any other optic of your choice. The removed stock, the M1941 hand stop, the Garenko 40 round magazine, hollow point, fabric grip, fleet, and quick. So that's something, again, we're kind of familiar with. We can breeze through that one. Now, the Owen gun is one that I still think is in the top 10 here, though it was mentioned that it did have a couple of adjustments to it with this Season 3 tuning pass. According to Raven, we ended up seeing reductions on the 7.62 Garenko 33 and 72 round magazine, plus the 142 millimeter rapid barrel. Now, two of those are in our normal build here for the Owen gun, the 72 round Garenko magazine and the rapid barrel. The ammunition having a head and neck damage multiplier decrease while the rapid barrel had a decrease in that additional fire rate but realistically this didn't really move all that much it is still a powerhouse and a weapon that will do well in your loadouts so i can still recommend this in our top 10 here with this especially for a sort of short game play for this it's a build that you may be familiar with if you've seen our other loadout videos the recoil booster rapid barrel slate 2.5 custom optic the ravenwood stock the m1941 hand stop the garenko 72 round magazine hollow point polymer grip, acrobatic, and quick. So while Raven attempted to adjust this and bring it down, still really isn't all that bad. Another weapon here that is still top 10 material and may just slightly fall slightly down in the power rankings is that of the Vargo. Now, with this, Raven ended up adjusting the Reinforced, the Takedown, the Task Force, and the Liberator Barrels, plus the Foregrip and Spetsnaz Grips, in which they attempted to decrease the recoil control across all of those. However, while all of the patch notes on paper reflect nerfs, it really doesn't change much. And in fact, in some cases, for controller players, it may even be easier to control in terms of recoil. Now, on a fundamental level, it does look like they actually made some adjustments here to potentially add to the magnitude of the recoil, but it made the pattern more consistent, it seems like. So, again, easier to control at a distance even. So for this, I'd end up running the GRU Suppressor, the Task Force Barrel, Axial Arms 3x Optic, Spetsnaz Grip, and the 60 Round Magazine. And fun fact, if you end up having the Ferro Fluid Blueprint in your armory, Season 3 actually kind of duplicated and bugged that blueprint out where it gives you an unreleased blueprint just named the Vargo 52. So a nifty little alternative here that may be patched soon, but for the time being, get a cool look at it. Now, what would a discussion about the Vargo be if we don't talk about the AK-47 and the XM4? The AK-47 and XM4, again, very similar, if not identical in the builds, just changing depending on the names of the attachments. But the AK-47, I think, still has the leg up in terms of over the XM4 and maybe even over the Vargo now slightly. But this, I ended up running for the AK, the GRU Suppressor, Spetsnaz RPK Barrel, Axial Arms 3x Optic, Spetsnaz Grip, and the 45 or 60 round magazine. Honestly, I run the 45 lately just because it has the blueprint cosmetics on it, but it's entirely up to you. The difference between the 45 and the 60 is like three frames of ADS speed. So not a whole ton in terms of drawbacks for that. And the XM4 is, again, the same exact way here at this, where you're just going to notice a little bit of bounce by comparison. Raven did end up saying they dropped the minimum damage down to 26, where it was 27 beforehand, and also extended the damage range to 880, which was up from 850. So in a sense, it got a nerf and a buff, 
but in a practical sense, it really doesn't change the gameplay all that much. For this, run the Agency Suppressor, Task Force Barrel, Axie Alarm 3x Optic, Field Agent Foregrip, and the 60 Round Magazine. Now, finally, to round out the sort of long and close range meta here with this, we're going to talk about the MP40, because this, again, got some adjustments here to it, but it still is an insanely good weapon to use. And just like the Vargo, whereas it was adjusted, it just might not have been adjusted enough to knock it out of the top 10. This, as always, the recoil booster, the short barrel, the ISO 1M optic for me personally, the folding stock, the pistol grip, the Gorenko 45 round magazine, hollow point, polymer grip, unmarked, and quick. Now, we do have still one more weapon up on deck in the top 10, and I wanted to reserve that for the sniper meta, because, of course, the sniper meta did get changed drastically. You have so many of your weapons that were primary favorites beforehand that are no longer really viable for that one-shot potential if you're playing a true sniping gameplay. The Car 90 AK, the Swiss K31, still can one-shot, but only out to a distance. But your AX50, your HDR, and your ZRG, you're probably going to see these emerge as the new meta weapons for Season 3 in that sniping category. For me, personally, it's the AX50 all day, has better handling the HDR and the ZRG, might not deal as much damage to extremities, but if you're going for headshots, which you want to be doing as a sniper, it's really not going to matter much when all three can infinitely one-shot headshot to any distance. But the AX-50 has better handling than the HDR and is more mobile and faster snapping. So to me, this is what I went back to immediately. It's going to take some time to get used to in terms of that different bullet lead and also perhaps the standard magnification that we end up seeing with the AX-50. But for this, it reverts back to an old Modern Warfare build that I've had here in pocket for quite some time. The Mono Suppressor, the Factory Barrel, the Tack Laser, the Syngard Arms Assassin stock and the stippled grip tape. You don't need anything in terms of magazine. Five rounds is, I think, just enough. The bipod really doesn't help you out. It really only adjusts your crouch and prone recoil control, but half the time you're not going to be using that probably. The stock of the Syngard Arms Assassin increases that ADS speed, as does the stippled grip tape and the tack laser. So you have a weapon that can infinitely one-shot headshot, but with the fastest snapping ability of any of the snipers that can do that. So for me, that is closing out the top 10 here in terms of that overall meta for Season 3. Now, now, there are, of course, a ton of honorable mentions. As we said in the intro, the meta is thankfully pretty healthy still. Raven, as of the last couple of months, has been doing a good job at keeping things sort of a healthy mix of weapons on offer. Things like your Cooper Carbine absolutely can do well. I personally don't prefer it for Caldera. I feel like with 300 HP, it's just a hair too slow to kill. The STG, again, pretty solid, but depends on what you're using with it. The longer range shots, I found myself bouncing quite a bit here. You'll see the clip probably that I put on screen with it, but that's something you may notice a bit more bounce in the shots, which may not be advantageous. The Bruin is still phenomenal. We talked about that as of recently. Same with the PKM. The Automaton still has a place in the meta, as does the EM2, Farah, PPSH, Type 100, and others. So seriously, there's still a ton of different weapons that you can use here, even if it's not necessarily in the top 10 that we listed here with it. Not definitive, as we always say, but that's we're going to wrap it up, so I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of this here? Are you guys liking this top 10 that we put together? Or are you liking the changes to the weapons we've seen so far? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. We're getting all things Warzone, Vanguard, Season 3, and Modern Warfare 2 content here coming up very, very soon. So if you're interested in any of that, I'd love to have you in the community. That said, thanks so much for watching. I'm Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.